About a week ago I made this. It's styrofoam bits and cement. Maybe by volume eight styrofoam bits to one part cement-ish, somewhere in there, I didn't really measure. But uh, it was just a test and it seems like it's strong enough to be useful. Now it took me a ridiculously long period of time to chew up this much styrofoam with like a raspy file. Um, but this looks like it's promising enough that I wanna make a some kind of fast styrofoam chewer upper machine thing. And uh, I'm thinking I can, I don't have enough styrofoam to do this yet, but if I made one of these that was really big, I could use it as a floating dock. Particularly if it was lined with uh, a good layer of concrete that was reinforced with maybe some, some plastic netting or something. Something that would be fine in the, in the water. But I think that would make a really good floating dock. Uh, or even just, uh, I don't know, blocks for, for building and stuff. Now, I do kind of want to test this to see how strong it is. I'm pretty sure I can break it with my bare hands. Let me see. Wow. Oh yeah, that was actually stronger than I was expecting. I had to push on that pretty hard. Cool. All right, I want to make a machine. Let me think, what can chew up styrofoam? The other obvious reason I want to do this, I feel like this goes without saying, but just anything where I can take garbage out of the garbage system and turn it into something useful is great because there's too much garbage in the world. My duck here is all anxious because he's uh, waiting for his girlfriend to pop some eggs. So uh, he's hanging out with me today. All right, I don't know what I'm gonna use for this. So I'm just gonna start. Wow, it is dark in here. Here's the file I used. This is one of those rare occasions where I don't need stainless bearings so I can get my scrap ones out. All right, that's obviously too loose. However, if I take a piece of a slightly bigger pipe with a chunk cut out of it, stuff's in there. Pretty good. Good enough for this. Well, I found this in my junk pile. Eh, not bad. I put something else on here later. Now I want this to have a fatter thing. Oh well, yeah. About that thick. Wait a minute. Oh, those bearings actually fit inside there. Is there any way that's advantageous? I don't think so. Hold on a second. Those bearings fitting in here is advantageous. Because now this is lined up perfectly over this. And if I screw a bunch of screws in it, then I can pull the bearings out to where they should be. And it'll be in the right spot. Oh, marvel. Donde es mi tornillo? Mm. Oh, yeah, right behind me. All right, there's got to be some good screws in here. And I need to finish this kid car and get it out of my workshop so I have some space again. Hmm. I'm a little bit short on these screws now because about a week ago some guys came by and said our propeller is slipping and we need to get home and they're about an hour away from home so I used a bunch of these screws to fix the propeller temporarily long enough for them to get home at least so I'm a little short but that's okay, it's worth it, because they get to stay home with their families instead of being stuck out in the water somewhere, so. Totally worth it. All right, I got three of those. Hopefully those are going into the middle piece. And if I pull this bearing out, it should stay. Come on, bearing. Oh, it's hard to get a grip. Get a grip, son! <laughs> get a guard! Here's my, oh, I gotta put it in the vise. Haha, <laughs> cool. Well, that looks like it should be something fancier than just a grinder wheel. Alright, put a bunch more screws in there. Probably want more screws than that, but I can put more in later. Alright, now where does this go? Hmm. 
Boy, it'd be easy to make a wood box. And then the termites would eat it. Well, I can make a wood lid for a bucket. I think I can keep that out of termite zone. Oh, man. It's pouring rain outside, so I can't get any wood from outside. What have we got in here? Well, there's this piece of wood I've got all this stuff on. Oh, wait a minute. Right there. That might be big enough. And now the question remains. If I'd known I was going to need those screws so soon, would I have still helped the guys in the boat? I hope so. Oh, hold on a second. I should do it. If this works really well, I can pop this off and put a drill on there. Now let me see what I got here. <laughs> well, I think what the end piece might have gotten in a little big. Hmm. Well, those are a little bit bigger than I want. So maybe I should unscrew this piece of wood, slide it closer in, and screw it back in. Just reduce that gap. All right, I shrunk the gap on this side and left that one the same. That way I can do big chunks here, little chunks here. I think. bigger pieces, but I think that's alright. What I think I might be able to do here... Try again! I'm gonna have to hammer it! Where's my... Oh, here's my hammer. That's in there pretty good. No, maybe we don't need to go full speed. than filing it by hand. <laughs> uh, 
Well, that chews it up pretty fine, too. Huh. I am going to have to do something about the, the uh, incidental mess. Maybe I'll build a little thing around this. Or you know what? Maybe I'll just get it off the floor when I'm done. Just sweep it up and put it... That's not that hard to do. of it's getting in the bucket. Maybe a little more. Actually, definitely more. Most of it's in there, yeah. Oh, what? Alright. I think I need to do this over a tarp. Then or a garbage bag or something just around here so I can scoop it up at the end. Yeah, and I'm not losing that much and it's all, all the incidental pieces are just falling right around the bucket, so... I don't think it'll be that hard to keep it clean. Yeah, you know I'm just gonna make a bunch right now. This should go without saying, but just in case, this is dangerous. If I touch that while it's spinning, it will hurt my finger. I trust myself to do this after years of, you know, working with table saws and band saws. But I won't let my kids use this unless I put like some kind of box around this where you just drop the stuff in or something. You don't have to put your fingers anywhere near it. I'm mostly saying that just in case someone out there who doesn't have so much table saw experience makes one of these. You gotta be careful with your fingers. Or build a box around it so you can just drop the stuff in. Alright, I've got most of a bucket of stuff. Now... Mix it with cement, right? You know, I was kind of concerned that that's, those bits were going to be like all over everything. But they don't stick to things as bad as I thought. I thought I was going to be covered in them, but it looks like they come off pretty well and they're not too hard to keep in one spot. I'm not sure how to mix this without making a mess. Can I just mix it right in the bucket? What do you think, dude? Oh, you don't want nothing to do with it? All right. Ooh, watermelon. Nice. I think he's demonstrating how to mix the stuff. If I just do that, I'm not sure if that's gonna work, Doc. <laughs> I got some cement in here now. I think it's about one part cement for six or seven parts styrofoam bits-ish, somewhere around there. I didn't really measure. All right, I need to get some water. I wanted to mix it up first so that I didn't end up with cement clumps. Because once it's wet, it'll clump together. I don't know what I'm Later. So maybe I can find a huge amount of styrofoam, which shouldn't be that hard, because I know there's tons of it around. And then I can make like a little area that has a tarp that'll kind of contain any bits. 
and then I can make some big styrofoam stuff. Oh, and why don't I just use uh, foam concrete? Uh, I wouldn't trust that to float for something like a floating dock. Also, I have not yet made a foamer. That's a whole separate project. And scrambly. Oh. You want some?